Welcome back to From the Press Box on FridayNightOhio.com. This is Andrew Adam from The Suburbanite. I'm Chris Easley from The Independent. We're going to be talking about the big games of Week 9 and teams that are uh, looking to make their way into the playoffs. Uh, we're going to start off in the Federal League with two teams that are 7-1, and one, North Canton Hoover and Glen Oak, uh, with possible Federal League championship implications on the line. Not just possible, it is Federal League championship implications. Hoover is undefeated in the Federal League. They can secure a share of the uh, a share of the title with a win this week. Glen Oak can can put themselves in position to get a share of the uh, a share of the title if they beat Hoover. This is going to be a great football game. I really think they're 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 pretty evenly matched in, in a lot of ways. But uh, I, I think you got to get the edge to Hoover because of Eric Howard. I mean, you're talking about one uh, an, an odds on favorite to get the Star County Player of the Year over 1,200 yards rushing, catch the ball out of the backfield, and, and is a terrific linebacker as well. And uh, probably to make matters worse for Glen Oak, uh, Brandon Martin, their quarterback, and uh, Drew Ayers, the running back, are probably both questionable for this game. Drew Ayers did not play last week. So if they don't have those two, we're going to, you know, we saw Eric's, Alex Meredith last week for Glen Oak throw a touchdown pass, but he only was in there for a couple plays. Can he do it for a whole game? Uh, I'm sure Glen Oak hopes so, but if they don't, if those two players aren't in there, it could be a key edge for, key edge for Hoover. Moving over to, uh, to Mahoning County, where the McKinley Bulldogs, coming off their first uh, first Federal League loss of the season, are, are, they're going to wrap up their Federal League schedule a week earlier than everybody, obviously, because they play Maslin in Week 10. But uh, they need to win this game for a couple of reasons. One, they stand to, to gain a piece of the title if, uh, if Glen Oak can beat Hoover. And also, you really, they're, they're sitting seventh in the region, which means you're kind of there on the bubble that, uh, you know, a couple of bad weeks, you can, you can find yourself sitting outside. So if McKinley can get this win over Boardman, that's a lot of points that Boardman p possesses, even though they, they've struggled to play against the likes of Hoover and Glen Oak. They get this win there, that should put them a little more comfortable going over to Maslin. And for Boardman, they just need to get back on track. You start the season off 5-0, and oh, then you drop three straight. Uh, they need to ride Damian Jarrett, the running back, uh, back into the win column. You move over then to the Northeastern Buckeye Conference where uh, Louisville is head and shoulders above everybody else, especially with the way they've played. They're, they're blowing teams out. They're, 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 I mean, they're even blowing teams like Hoover out. But here they, they got the one last real test from, from a team that I think legitimately has a shot to, to knock them off, and that's uh, when Canton South comes to town. South has the offense that if they can, can control the ball a little bit, keep that Louisville offense off the field, the, I, I think they have a chance to, to hang with the Leopards. Uh, Canton South, I mean, they just played Alliance this week. They got a big win there. Uh, they won 21-14. They really hang, hung on their defense, and uh, they're going to need that defense to come up big because no defense so far has stopped Louisville. And then, you know, besides that defense, just maybe holding them under 40 points, Matt Trissel, Matt Trissel has got to be on, you know, on his game. He's got to be lights out and, uh, you know, use running back Justin Keith as well. Um, if they can do those things, maybe they can hang tough, but I don't know. Louisville just looks like, you know, they're standing alone atop the – Tap those ranks. Moving over now to the the Principals Athletic Conference, where where Tusk Law uh, ha, has shown itself to be the the class of that league so far. They dispatched CVCA to beat, beat Manchester last week in a terrific game up in Manchester. Now they get Triway coming to town. Now Triway's only two losses are to CVCA and Manchester, two very good football teams. So Triway, I mean, that's a team that's a dangerous team for Tusk to face if if they want to to win their second pack title in in three years under Nate Held and stand to, to possibly post their first 10-0 season in school history. Now you move on to the teams maybe that don't have conference championships to play for, but they're still playoff hopes. Their playoff hopes are still alive. They're kind of in that 6-12, to 11-12 range in the, in the region, and the, the biggest thing that maybe jumps out is the Maslin Tigers, who sit at 5-3. and three. They've been kind of up and down all season. Uh, they finally put together their first two-game win streak, uh, they beat a Brantford, Ontario team, which obviously is going to be overmatched. And then last week they go to Warren, get their first win in Trumbull County since uh, 1986. So they, they got a key game this Friday night up at Mentor, who's worth a lot of points. Now, if the Tigers get this win, which they've struggled the last two years to beat Mentor, that, that, puts them in, that puts them comfortable, I think. That puts them in a comfortable spot going into that McKinley game in, in Week 10. And plus, like you said, they just they got two wings strung, strung together, but they got to show you know, they can win four in a row. It's the end of the season. That's when you want to play your best football, and if they can do that, they'll be going into the, going into the playoffs with some momentum. Another team is uh, Manchester. You know, we talked about them earlier. They, they, they lost that game last few minutes against Tuslaw, but now they're 6-2. They're number nine in the ranks. They've got an easier game against Timken this week, but they can't overlook that. 
And then final week, you got CVCA at seven and one. It's pretty much going to decide their playoff hopes. Uh, Jim France always provides a, a great football team, but they're definitely going to need to be perfect these last two weeks. Well, they're also going to get help from Tesla because with that triway sitting at seven in the region right now. They, if Tesla wins, that's going to knock try, try away down. So Manchester stands to gain this week if Tesla wins one way or the other, as long as they take care of business with Tempkin. But obviously, you certainly uh, that that's a big point game they still have there in Week Ten. That so if they can finish strong, two game win streak, that, and then you'll see the Panthers back in the playoffs after a couple of years of, of missing out. And that's going to uh, kind of wrap things up for us here in uh, Week Eight, Week Nine, I say, should say, with from the press box from Friday night, Ohio. Check back in here every week around Tuesday, around noon, and uh, for uh, the, the latest edition of this, uh, this fine program. And also, you want to make sure to click on the Contact Us option on the website. Let us know what do you want to see us talk about. Are we, are we leaving out a good team that, that you think that should be mentioned on the show? If so, tell us, and we'll make sure to talk about them. That's all we have. My name's Andrew Adam, and I'm from The Suburbanite. I'm Chris Eastley from The Independent. And this is From the Press Box.